the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Though people may be joining us from many regions, we acknowledge that the Church of St. Stephen in the Fields stands on occupied land, the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit and Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Wendat and Petun nations, land covered by the dish with one spoon wampum belt covenant. Treaty 13 and the Williams Treaty are also relevant to this territory. We acknowledge that we have broken the treaties. We acknowledge the damage done by colonialism and the role that our church has played in this. And we pledge ourselves to work for a future of justice and reconciliation. secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love 
and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting us to this table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name amen almighty god have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through jesus christ our lord amen the peace of the lord be always with you and also with you peace everyone peace peace be with you peace everyone peace everyone peace, everyone. peace be with you everyone good morning to all peace peace, peace be with you all <clears throat> peace everyone <laughs> Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Living God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives make known your glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, before, you, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am only a boy, for you shall go to all whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them. For I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, 
Today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of the evildoer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God, my confidence since I was young. I have been sustained by you ever since I was born. From my mother's womb you have been my strength. My praise shall be always of you. A reading from the first letter to the Corinthians. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see 
face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. And the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. with you the holy gospel of our lord jesus christ according to luke glory to you lord jesus christ then jesus began to say to the people in the synagogue today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing all spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth they said is not this joseph's son he said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself, and you will say, Do hear also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up for three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them, except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the the town and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built so that they might hurl him off the cliff but he passed through the midst of them and went on his way the gospel of christ praise to you lord jesus christ may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. It, it is not an easy gospel reading we have today. Jesus, in his hometown of Nazareth, is being oddly provocative with the crowd. He's like, so I suppose you're going to ask me to do some miracles now, aren't you? And saying something which might seem not only strange, but cruel, that there can be a famine in the land and one foreign widow's son might be spared, but most will die and not be brought back. That most lepers will go on being lepers, that most will not be healed, 
and that those who are will probably be the strangers, the foreigners, not the inner community, family, friends. It's not surprising, actually, that the people in the synagogue wanted to throw him off a cliff. Why would someone who can heal a leper or a dying woman with a single touch not heal everyone? And especially those of his own community. Why not? The Gospel demands that we look at this question because it is a question that we are still asking, all of us, so much of the time. For we are not all healed. Most of us, in fact, are not healed, or at least not in the ways we want to be healed. We suffer sickness. We suffer age and disability, grief and pain and loneliness. The pandemic grinds on, divisions grow more and more sharp. The refusal of people to care about others, to act as a body. But not only from this pandemic, but from all the realities of the world, we are smitten. Our loved ones sicken, they are in pain, they die, and we are left here mourning. Such rescues as we know are temporary, an island in the great flood, a moment of respite, not an enduring safety. We wish for miracles, we wish for the people we love to be always safe and well, to have their hurts and ours taken away. Maybe sometimes we believe that we are a community that should have special status, should be more safe, more cared for, but it doesn't happen like that. We are out on the sharp edge of this hard world, and no one saves us from the pain. And if we are chosen for anything, it is to be in that difficult place. God will not rescue us by magic. God refuses to do so. For that would make us puppets in a divine show. And even if some days it seems like that would be easier, that is not what we were made to be. We are not passive material manipulated in divine hands. We are creative creatures in a world which is broken and challenging and real. And we in our little selves must be an active part of whatever healing there can be. Sorrow and suffering, limit and loss are a part of this reality. And to take away these hard human limits would be to take away our human lives. But we are also created in and through love. Jesus may seem to speak harshly here to the people of Nazareth, but he is the same person who wept at the grave of Lazarus. The word of God in human flesh also knew grief and anger and fear, and walks with us in these times. In our first reading, God does reach down to touch Jeremiah in a time of danger and adversity, but not to fix him up or make everything suddenly okay. God reaches down to say, you are mine, I love you. To say, I know you utterly, I knew and loved you from before you were born, and I have a task for you. It will not be an easy one, but I will be with you, I will always be with you, whatever strange and difficult places you have to go. And that's what we are given, what we are promised, that we are known and beloved and never alone. This is what it means to be whole, not that our pain will be gone but that we always live in the embrace of the Creator's knowledge and care which reaches out to the excluded above all, which reaches out to us not in our comfortable places, but in so far as we are the lost, the failures, the rejected. We are not abandoned. In life, in death, we are held. We will fail. We will fall. We will be as inadequate as Jeremiah felt himself to be. We will sometimes despair. 
but we are named. And those names are written on the palms of love's hands, and love never ends. There is nowhere we can go where the impossible love of God, which went down to the place of death for us, cannot find us. And when God knows us and names us, God also calls us. God gives us a task. Jesus couldn't heal everyone and quite pointedly wouldn't heal everyone. But what he does right after this in the next chapter of Luke's Gospel is to call the Twelve and to send them out into the world. The people of Nazareth didn't get the healing they wanted for themselves and their relatives. Instead, they were given a chance to be part of a radical healing of social divisions, Jesus bringing into community of the outcast, the unvalued, the unclean. And we, like them, are asked to be partners in the repair of the hurting world. If the healing is to happen, it must happen through us. What does that mean? Well, that is part of the task, too, trying to find that out. For Jeremiah, it meant identifying the injustice and oppression in his time and place and calling it out in the public square. It meant telling those in power that their society was collapsing all around them because of greed and selfishness, because they were pursuing their own desires instead of serving the poor and the outcast. Speaking that truth, fighting the forces of oppression and working for change are parts of the necessary healing. Although so is the acknowledging of our limits, our inability to fix and heal it all. Jeremiah himself did not overthrow nations, though he did see nations fall. In the end, he would be the one urging the scattered people to build and plant, even in their exile, to seek the small good they could create in the wreckage, the islands of care. And the call to healing may also mean realizing that the person next to you in the street, in the church, is quietly suffering and doing for them what you can. It may mean giving each other attention and kindness, and this is not trivial. It is not a small thing at all. It is the whole fabric of our human lives. It will not serve all the problems or make all things better. If Jesus couldn't heal everyone, we certainly can. But we can heal now and then, small moments of our times. We can make things better, not forever, but for a day, an hour, a minute. And those minutes matter eternally. We can create spaces of rescue, always temporary, fragile, impermanent, but immeasurably important. By these small rescues, by each moment won back from chaos, some part of the world is preserved. The work of healing is broad and multiple, and its outlines are drawn in Paul's well-known, possibly too well-known description of love, which we heard as our second reading today. You hear this reading a lot. You hear it a lot at weddings, at funerals sometimes, and these are legitimate uses. But Paul wrote this not for a couple or a family. He did not write it for people who liked each other. He wrote it for a community in crisis. These are guidelines for how a ragged gang of argumentative, selfish, troubled people struggling with class divisions and problems around gender and human personal squabbles thrown together in an unexpected comradeship can start to manage to heal themselves and each other and the world, and they are guidelines which are beautiful and stringent. They are, more than anything else, guidelines for making space, for stepping back, for setting aside our own desires, for the sake of the needs and longing and simple selfhood of the other, the love that does not insist on its own interests the love that makes space, the love that tends. 
it is, among other things, the precise opposite of what we are seeing in Ottawa this weekend, where people continue to block streets, honk car horns, harass businesses, set off fireworks, um, etc. In, in pursuit of a vision of freedom which is an untrammeled personal liberty which makes no space for responsibility or care which is entirely about the interest of the self and the self's false and empty freedom. The freedom of the kind of love of which Paul speaks in the letter to the Corinthians. And the Corinthians had their own libertarian stream, by the way. Paul is uh, quite aware of what he's talking into. It is, it is an absolute contrast. Healing of all this is not easy. Healing is not fully possible. But we are still called to look for the moment, for the tiny place where something through our work may be healed. We can imagine that Jesus, in his human nature, might very well have wanted to heal everybody, all the sick people, in Galilee, in Capernaum, in Jerusalem, in the world. Infinite compassion in a human body would surely have desired immediate rescue for all those wounded bodies. But he knew as well that this is more or less precisely what Satan had just offered him in the wilderness and what he had just refused. Power, magic, adoration, domination, everything except the stringent, self-effacing discipline of love. And God withdraws to make space for us. To make space for us to do such work as we can and to be forgiven for all our failures, as infinitely as we need. Amen. Let us confess our faith as we say. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. <clears throat> On January 27, 1945, the Auschwitz-Birkenau concentration and dead camp complex were liberated. Three days ago, we observed International Holocaust Remembrance Day. It is an occasion to honor the millions of Jews murdered by Nazi Germany and its accomplices. Loving God on this Holocaust Memorial, we pray for all your people, trusting that for each person, one day becomes the day on which their life changes for the better. As the extreme cold weather grips our city, we pray for the displaced affected by the plunging temperatures and for volunteers at warming centers in the city. For the souls of the family of four Indian nationals that froze to death in Southern Manitoba while trying to cross the United States border last week. We pray for an end to human trafficking. For the Eastern Mediterranean region where snowfall has disrupted life for internally displaced people in camps in Syria. For those caught in the stampede at the Africa Cup of Nations match in Yaoundé, Cameroon, and for those who mourned the eight who died. For those who are still crossing or trying to cross the border between Myanmar and Thailand, may this be the one day they reach a place of safety. For women in Guatemala, who celebrate the judicial victory in sexual violence cases over half a century. We pray that one day will bring peace and equality to all who suffer FGM and hymenosplasty. For those who are still affected by COVID-19 restrictions and especially for those whose life events, weddings, baptism, birthdays and funerals are disrupted May they find one day their special day is marked. For next steps at the conclusion of the Afghanistan talks in Oslo, Norway, we pray that one day, every day, the people of Afghanistan would receive food, medical aid, and shelter. And we pray that one day we will see a genuine global response to COP26 climate summit. Amen. The bidding for our intercession prayers today is, you are our hope, O God. And the response is, our praise shall be always of you. Our praise shall be always of you. To God who welcomes all in love. You have taught us that without love, our speech is but noise and our power is as nothing. Let your infinite love fill all creation to bless and reconcile the universe to you. Let us pray for the good of the church and the concerns of those in need. As we say, you are our hope, O God. Our praise shall be always of you. Holy One, you have called your church in the power of the spirit and filled us with your divine love. Grant us your gifts of patience, kindness, and humility, that rejoicing in the truth, we may bear all things, believe all things, hope all things, endure all things for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. You are our hope, O God. Our praise shall be always of you. Almighty One, in all times and places you have called your prophets in the power of the Spirit and put your words into their mouths. Let your prophetic word direct the leaders of the nations to pluck up and pull down all instruments of violence and oppression, 
to destroy and to overthrow all justice, to build and to plant your reconciling peace. You are our hope, O God. Our praise shall be always of you. Reconciling one, let your power go forward into all the earth with such grace and strength that your Holy Spirit may heal the sick, support the widowed, welcome the stranger, and comfort all who suffer. You are our hope, O God. Our praise shall be always of you. Compassionate one, you have fulfilled the scriptures in our hearing and called us to be a community of love. Let our kindness reach out beyond our boundaries to embrace the entire world, which you bless through Christ's spirit of compassion. You are our hope, O God. Our praise shall, all, shall be always of you. We pray today in the worldwide Anglican cycle of prayer for the Church of the Province of the Indian Ocean. Your prayers are asked in the Anglican Church of Canada for the Provincial Synod of the Ecclesiastical Province of Canada. And in the, and in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada for the Dean, Council and Congregations of the Ottawa, Ottawa Valley and Seaway areas of the Eastern Synod. And in our diocesan cycles for Holland Deanery, for Grace Church Markham, its monthly lunch, its participation in the Pigankakam Water Project, and education and advocacy on indigenous and right relations issues. For Grace Church Scarborough, its monthly community lunch and cooking club, and its support of the Good Food Box. And for the parish of Halliburton, and its support of the Halliburton Youth Hub, you are our hope, O oh God. Our praise shall be always of you. In you, O oh God, have we taken refuge. Incline your ear to us and save us. We pray for the sick, the lonely, the housebound and the vulnerable, for those in need of food, shelter, clothing, and of God's healing touch that in the midst of their suffering, they will experience the loving arms of Christ, that their sickness may be turned to health. We pray especially for Phyllis, Vanessa, Becky, Alex, Tasia, Damien, Tanis, Beck, Lavina, Michael, Victor, Kadim, Kim, Marvin, Ed, Roy, Andrew, Andy Ali, Georgina, Alicia, Jean, Terry, Suan, Dave, Leone, Maria, Cheryl, Emily, George, Rena, Laura, Shirley, Darla, the Huggins family, Catherine, Allison, Tucker, Father Bob, you are our hope, O oh God. Our praise shall be always of you. Loving God, you are our strong rock. You have sustained us from our birth. Hear our grateful prayers as we pray in thanksgiving, especially for those in our parish family, especially for Ebony Spenskin, Joy Spenskin, Katie Berger, Annette, Errol, Shanice, and Riley Jerome, and Serena Broker, Levina Bryan, Andrea Budgie, Brent Campbell, and Misha Badesh McCabe, and Ziggy Badesh McCabe, Robert Carson, Jonathan Chabot, Jack Shadwick, Phyllis Coombs, Catherine Crockett, and Colin Hines. You are our hope, O oh God. Our praise shall be always of you. Loving God, we commend to you those who have died, 
that they will see you face to face and will know you fully, even as they have been fully known. We also pray for those whose anniversary of death occurs at this time of year. We pray especially for Akaya. We pray for those who mourn their loved ones. May we be strong companions in these dark hours of their journeys. You are our hope, O oh God. Our praise shall be always of you. Remember the lost, the homeless, and all those who suffer through war and injustice. Remember also in your prayers those who have lost their lives through acts of violence. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord. And may light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Gracious and ever-living God, you knew us and chose us before you formed us in the womb. Let your people abide in faith that speaks your word, hope that does not disappoint, and love that bears all things for your sake that we may share Christ's victory over the prejudice and sectarian passions which divide the world and be so filled <clears throat> and be so filled with the abundance of your infinite love that the scripture may be fulfilled in us and all people be united in the power of your loving spirit receive these prayers and the prayers of our hearts in the name of the one who is your life Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. For the healing of the nations, God, we pray with one accord for a just and equal sharing that earth affords to a life of love in action help us rise and pledge our word lead us father into freedom from despair your world release that redeemed from war and hatred all may come and go in peace. Show us how through care and goodness fear will die and hope increase. All that kills abundant living, let it from the earth be banned. Pride of status, race or schooling, darkness that obscure your plan. In our common quest for justice, may we hallow life's brief span. You creator God have written your great name on humankind for our growing in your likeness bring the life of Christ to mind that by our response and service earth its destiny God of steadfast love, may our offering this day, by the power of your Holy Spirit, renew us for your service. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. <laughs> The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is 
like to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. You are the source of light and life for all your creation. You made us in your own image and call us to know life in Jesus Christ our Savior. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. calling Israel to be your people. In your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we wait his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood 
of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new. And bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your children. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. <clears throat> our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace, grant us Let us pray. Source of all goodness, in this Eucharist we are nourished by the bread of heaven and invigorated with new wine. May these gifts renew our lives that we may show your glory to all the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.
Word of God, come down on earth, living rain from heaven descending. Touch our hearts and bring to birth faith and hope and love unending. Word Almighty, we revere you. Word made flesh, we long to hear you. Word eternal, throne on high, word that brought to life creation, word that came from heaven to die, crucified for our salvation. Saving word, the world restoring, speak to us your love outpouring. Word that caused blind eyes to see, speak and heal our mortal blindness. Deaf we are, our healer be, loose our tongues to tell your kindness. Ye our word in pity spoken, heal the world by our sin broken. Word that speaks God's tender love, one with God beyond all telling. Word that sends us from above, God the Spirit with us dwelling. Word of truth to all truth lead us, Word of life with one bread feed us. Go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And thank you all. Um, I think our schedule of events for the week is fairly much as usual. We will have our Cloud of Unknowing reading and discussion group tomorrow night at 7, and the Bible study and meditation Tuesday at 7.30. Uh, we have our drop-in on Friday night, of course, from 6 to 10, and the breakfast Saturday and Sunday from 7 to 8.30. Um, and at the moment, things seem to be settling down a little on the volunteer front, which is, which is good. Um, next week, as well as our usual events, the Reconciliation Walk events will resume on Thursday, February 10th. Um, we'll have more details about that next week. But uh, you can mark your calendar in the meantime if you want. Also, to uh, flag in advance, what I should have been announcing probably for weeks already is that uh, we are intending to have our vestry on the final Sunday in February. Um, that will be where we, we look at our financials, where we pass a budget for the year, um, elect officers, uh, consider the social justice and advocacy motion, which this year is about uh, decent work and working conditions. Um, so please do please do plan to attend the vestry on which will be online after the service. We'll have a, a little short break for people to get coffee or snacks or lunch or whatever. Well, not a full, like bring lunch back. Um, and we will uh, then assemble for for vestry. This will be our our third online vestry, I think. Um, we're, we're, many parishes have only had two. We've had three. We'll have, we'll have had three, so. Um, and that is the bulk of what I need to announce. Um, you may be aware that the diocese is permitting parishes to resume in-person worship as of February 1st. Um, I have discussed this with Corporation, and we do not intend to take advantage of that permission at this time. It's certainly not a requirement. Um, not convinced yet uh, that the public health indicators are going to hold up when everything reopens, so we're going to 
wait a while and see how that plays out before we make any any moves back into in-person worship. Um, but I do I do hope that it will be possible. Um, maybe for Ash Wednesday, who knows? We will we will keep monitoring the situation. Uh, I think that is everything that I have to announce for now. So I will hand over to Adonica. Many thanks, Mother Maggie, Mother Andrea, Deacon Elizabeth, our wardens, Catherine, Leroy, Martin, and Brent, our technician, Catherine, our choir, intercessor, musicians, readers, um, uh, including Zoe, Esther, Sarah, Janet, Catherine, Hugh, Martin, Elise, Leroy, and Roxy, and everyone who brought us the service today. Thanks to all who attend on all of our platforms, um, especially those who are new to St. Stephen's, we welcome you and encourage you to join us on Zoom so that after the postlude, uh, with your tea or coffee in hand, you can join us for engaging conversation about topics spiritual and not for as short or as long a time as you're able. Thank you all. <laughs>